To draw the brachial plexus, first draw three horizontal lines. Label them from top to bottom as the upper, middle, and lower trunks. Next indicate that C7 makes up the middle trunk, and then that C5 and C6 join to form the upper trunk. They join at Herb's point, and a shoulder injury here is called an Herb's palsy. Then show C8 and T1 form the lower trunk. The brachial plexus is typically formed from the C5 to T1 ventral rami, which we have shown, but also attach C4 to C5 and T2 to T1. If C4 is involved, the brachial plexus is shifted up one level and is called a prefixed plexus, whereas if T2 is involved, the plexus is shifted down one level and is called a postfixed plexus. The trunks divide into anterior and posterior divisions as follows. Show the posterior divisions all join to form the posterior cord. Then label the anterior division of the upper trunk on top and show the anterior division of the middle trunk join it to form the lateral cord. At the bottom label the anterior division of the lower trunk and then the medial cord. The cords are named by their relationship to the axillary artery. Lateral lies lateral to it, medial is medial, and posterior lies behind it. Now connect the distal, lateral, and medial cords and label their union as the median nerve. Then show the medial cord becomes the ulnar nerve and the posterior cord becomes the radial nerve. Next, just distal to the lateral cord, label the musculocutaneous nerve which innervates the biceps brachii muscle. Flex your arm at the elbow to demonstrate its action. Now show C5, C6, and C7 together derive the long thoracic nerve, which innervates serratus anterior. It pulls the scapula forward and outward. Then show the dorsal scapular nerve originates from C5. It innervates the rhomboid muscles, which pull the scapula in the opposite direction of serratus anterior toward midline and downward. Injury to either of these muscles or the trapezius muscle which cranial nerve 11 innervates results in scapular winging. Next show the suprascapular nerve originate from the upper trunk and innervate the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. Demonstrate that the supraspinatus muscle is responsible for the first 20 to 30 degrees of arm abduction and that the infraspinatus muscle is the primary external rotator of the arm. The other is teres minor. Moving distally, indicate that the lateral pectoral nerve originates from the lateral cord. It innervates the clavicular head of pectoralis major, which adducts and internally rotates the arm. Then draw three branches from proximal to distal off the posterior cord the upper subscapular, thoracodorsal, and lower subscapular nerves, which innervate the subscapularis, latissimus dorsi, and teres major muscles, respectively. Off the posterior cord draw the axillary nerve, which innervates the deltoid muscle. While the supraspinatus muscle is responsible for the first 20 to 30 degrees of arm abduction, the deltoid muscle is responsible for the latter 70 to 80 degrees. Finally, draw the following nerves from the medial cord. The medial pectoral nerve, which innervates the sternal head of the pectoralis major muscle and provides the last 30 degrees of arm adduction. The medial brachial cutaneous and anticutaneous nerves, which are the sensory nerves that cover the medial aspect of the upper arm and forearm respectively. Testing the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve helps distinguish brachial plexus injuries from ulnar nerve injuries. The ulnar nerve covers the medial hand, and the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve covers the medial forearm. This concludes our drawing of the brachial plexus. Next, we will draw the median, ulnar, and radial nerves in further detail.